Blend modes and adjustment layers are two important concepts in Affinity programs, but sometimes you may wonder when to use which of them. Today we'll look at this question and provide some guidance. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today I wanna to answer a question I've gotten asked a few times. And if a few people have asked it, probably more people are wondering it. And that is, what's the difference between blend modes and adjustment layers? Now on my channel, I have videos that are a short introduction to blend modes and adjustment layers. In this video, I'll assume you know the basics of how they work. So let's actually talk a little bit more about when would you use each one. Now you can think of blend modes and adjustment layers as being two totally separate things, but in reality, there's some overlap between them. Some tasks can be done by both of them just as easily for the most part, whereas others are kind of impossible in one versus the other. So let's look at some actual examples. So let's look at this example of darkening an image here. And it's something I can do with both an adjustment layer and a blend mode. So with an adjustment layer, I have tons of options over here. There's several that will darken an image. Let's choose the brightness one. So brightness and contrast. And what I can do is I can just drag it and make that image darker. So let's just do something like that. Now, if I wanna make this image darker here, remember I don't actually select the image and then select a darken blend mode for the most part. What I need to do is put another layer above it that will act as a darkening filter. So in that case, I have to draw something like a rectangle say, and then for that rectangle above the blend image, I will select the multiply mode, and I can change the value of that rectangle to make it darker. Now it doesn't look exactly the same because the algorithms are a little bit different, but remember, I do have other options for darkening here. Maybe if I do linear burn with a certain opacity, I can get a closer look between the two. But the important point I wanna make is this structure here where with this image that I did with the adjustment layer, I added the adjustment layer below it. With my blend image, I had to add something above it. Now I don't wanna imply that an adjustment layer can only be within a layer because what I can do is I can also drag this out here. Let me delete the rectangle. Actually, we can take adjustment layers and move it up our stack here. So if I put it up on top, it's affecting everything below it. But to go back to our original example, when you think of blend modes, you wanna think about the interaction of one layer with the layers below it. Let's consider another example of changing the hue of something. So let's do it with an adjustment layer here. Let's change the color of these flowers. So I can select this layer here with the adjustment and let's add a HSL adjustment. And what you see is I can drag the hue around to change all of the colors here. But if I reset this, if I just wanna change the color of the flowers, I can target them specifically by clicking this yellow circle here. And now what I can do is I can make the flowers a different color. So this particular adjustment gave me advanced controls where I can target specific parts of the image. With a blend mode, this would be much harder to do. Now, of course, I can drag a rectangle over my whole image. I can change the color to some type of red. And you may say, well, let's do the color blend mode. And of course, it colors the whole image, which isn't really what we want. I'll delete this. Now, perhaps one thing we could also do is use the pen tool. So let's go in. I could draw a shape around my flowers here. I'll just do it roughly for now. Again, make it some type of red and set the color. So I colored that one flower, but it'd be very tedious to color all the flowers. And this really shows one of the main differences between adjustment layers and blend modes. If a layer has a blend mode, it has much more of an all or nothing effect on the layers below it. Whereas with adjustment layers, we often get much more sophisticated controls. We can see this again with a darkening effect. So let me select the adjustment image and I'll select the shadows and highlights. So let's say I wanna make the highlights really bright for some reason. I can drag it all the way up. Notice how the sky is mostly unchanged, but the flowers are getting brighter. This would be much harder to control with a blend mode. Now, maybe that last example made you think that blend modes aren't good for fine-tuned controls, but actually they can be really good for this purpose. Let me show you an example using the Pixel Persona in Affinity Designer. So I'll go to the Pixel Persona here. And let's say I wanna make the model's eyes blue here. That would actually be hard to do with an adjustment layer, just isolating that effect to the eyes. So what I can do is I can add a pixel layer here and I'll set the blend mode to color. Now I'll select a brush. I'll select some blue color here. And if I zoom in, I can start adding some color to these eyes. I can do the other one here. And I'll zoom out. And I can adjust the opacity so it's not too extreme here. But that was a fine-tuned adjustment that was much easier to do with a pixel layer and a simple blend mode of color. We can also add our custom highlights and shadows to this image. So let me add another pixel layer and we'll use the overlay blend mode. So with overlay, any levels of gray greater than 50% will be lightening and anything below 50% will be darkening. So I'll go back to my brush here and maybe I wanna darken her hair. I can easily paint it in. And this could be done with an adjustment, but if I want exact control, I can use my paintbrush. So here we have before, after, before, after. 
So using a pixel layer, blend modes and a paintbrush go really well together, especially things like the overlay blend mode and the color blend mode. Now earlier I said that blend modes can't really make any decisions based on the properties of an image. It's kind of an all or nothing thing. And actually that isn't quite true because there is this feature called blend options, which you can access by clicking on this button here. And this lets you make changes based on the value of the blend layer and the layer below it. I have an entire video on how to use this tool, so be sure to check it out if you want to learn more. I'll put a link to it right here. It's a really cool feature and can be handy for dealing with special effects. If you have any questions on this video, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.